Hello and welcome to this session on iterators in Python. Today we are going to talk about how to use and build iterators in Python. Iterators is a very important concept across all programming languages because it's a necessity and you will feel the need wherever you will have to loop across different elements, lists, arrays and etc. So today we are going to talk about how iterators are used in Python and what are the nitty gritties. Now what's in it for us today? We are going to talk about what is a Python iterator, what are iterables, right? What are the iterable objects, how an iterator works and then we will also discuss about how to throw a stop iteration exception. Basically when you reach the end of a, a list then you can throw a stop iteration exception and we will see that with an example. Now what is a Python iterator? Python iterator is an object that can traverse through iterable objects in Python like lists, tuples, dictionaries, sets and returns data one element at a time. So basically you can traverse through these lists one at a time and then you can use it as per your custom requirement. But iterator as an object is available to you, is a tool available to you in order to traverse through each and every element. Now, they are implemented within for loops, comprehensions, generators in Python implicitly. They are not visible upfront, but they are hidden in plain sight. So basically when you're using loops, when you're using generators, comprehensions, implicitly Python is actually converting them in the backend in an iterator object and giving you the results. Now what are iterables on which you can iterate? Lists, tuples, dictionaries, sets as I mentioned are all iterables or iterable objects. Other than these, you can't perform any iteration. If you have not created an object of list, tuple or dictionary or set, then of course your iterable will not be of any use. And these objects internally possess an iter method, I-T-E-R method, which is used to get an iterator, a handle to an iterator, and then you can start looping it or you can start accessing the elements of the iterator. Now how iterator works? Python iterator implements internally these two methods which you are seeing on the screen underscore underscore iter underscore underscore brackets and underscore underscore next underscore underscore brackets. Now these two methods are implicitly implemented by Python for any internal implicit iterator object but if you have to write your own custom iterator, then you need to override these methods and I'll show you in my examples in Jupyter Notebook. The iterator object is initialized using the iter method. So basically, whenever you have to create an iterator object, you need to initialize it with iter and then use next method in order to traverse through it. Now stop iteration exception. So as I mentioned, when we reach the end of an iterable, right? Like suppose you have a list or a set which has a length of four. When you have ended the uh, fourth element and you're trying to access something beyond fourth element, which is fifth, then of course you can implicitly raise a stop iteration exception or Python will throw it. So we will see that with an example, but you will get a stop iteration exception. Now, so to prevent, in order to uh, handle it, or uh, manage it in your code, we use stop iteration statement to raise an error. You can raise your custom error. So you can catch this exception and then raise your custom error in the underscore underscore next method. So now let's uh, support everything with our examples. Let's start with a very basic uh, example of an iterator. Now let me create a list with just four numbers and as I said I'm going to initialize my iterator with iter method. So now I have created a list and now I am initializing it with iter. Okay. Now using next I'm going to print my first element 4. Okay. So it means the iter internally has given me handle to the first element 
and now as many times i move print next i am moving to the next element so now i'm also going to show you a different syntax this is a syntax but the output will be same it's a different syntax to invoke underscore next so its output is going to be same but the syntax is only the difference over here so you're going to get access to the next element and then my fourth element which is 33 now i have traversed through all my four elements now what will happen if i again do next I have ended, I am at the end of my list. So I'll get an exception of stop iteration, right? And this is thrown by Python. Now let's take another interesting example. If I want to perform iteration on strings. So I have created a variable and I have initialized it with geeks. And now I have created an iterator on top of this uh, uh, string variable. And I'm going to traverse it till the time I end, reach the end of my string. So let me iterate it and I'm going to iterate till the time I get the stop iteration exception. So also I'm explaining here how to cleanly handle the exception, accept and then break. If I get the exception, I'll break out of this program. And here you get the result. All the letters of my string geeks has been printed individually. And I think it's a very important example, interesting example that how a string has been converted. Now, point to be noted over here is that Python has internally invoked underscore underscore ITER and underscore underscore next methods, which it has implicitly implemented for string iterators. So you don't need to do anything. Now let's take another example to how to traverse through a list using for loop. So I'm going to leave for object in list and just print the list. This is without an iterator. I'm just printing my list. So I'm just trying to show the difference that if you use an iterator or you do not, but how you can access the uh, elements in the list. Now let's take an example of how I can write my own custom iterator. Okay, so I'm creating a class where I'm overriding the init method, uh, basically initializing in is a initialization of my class where I'm gonna uh, initialize a variable max with zero. And then I am overriding, this is the most important point over here, I'm overriding iter uh, method and then I am writing another overriding the underscore underscore next method where I am adding six to my number and then incrementing my loop so that I can move further. So in this underscore next method, I am just moving beyond adding six and till the time I reach the max variable. So when I'll invoke my class, I'm passing nine. So it means that I should not go beyond uh, 10. Basically, I should start my iteration from six and will not go beyond 10, nine plus one. So I should get numbers which are between six to 10 as per my expectation. Now, before we diagnose the output, most important point is that how you have converted your class to an iterator over here. You in order to invoke, make a uh, class in iterator, it is mandatory you override iter ar and next methods which you have done over here. So now let's print okay so 6 so my uh, number started with 0 initialized with 0 and I added 6 to it so my first result is 6 and now if I keep printing, I will get one value incremented. Seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? So this is the expected output, right? Now, 
another example on the same lines i am going to print the first 20 numbers using my iterator so i am going to overwrite the iter method and underscore underscore next method my numbers now in this underscore underscore next method i am just incrementing my number y1 not by 6 and i am going to stop at the limit 20 so like i showed in my previous example I'm going to initialize first my class and then uh, initialize my iterator and just then going to run a for loop on it. And here is the response output. I have printed the first 20 numbers because I have created this limit. So I'm initializing with one and going till the max 20 number. But the point is, it's not the output which is more important over here. The most important concept over here is that you have created your own iterator and leveraged it. I hope you had a great learning session and I look forward to meeting you in my next session. Thank you. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.